it's so shiny. It's shinier than my future. I... <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there. Hello my friends, it's Isabella and today I am going to be talking about all of the books that I have acquired either through buying or receiving from you guys or receiving from one of my friends during quarantine. At the start of the year, I was a very, what's that word when you think you can do something but you really can't? <laughs> um, I was very confident in the fact that I would be able to complete a full year book buying ban. <laughs> I mean, I was doing pretty well up until like April or maybe May. I was doing really, really good. But then all of these good books started coming out. Once I broke my book buying ban, it kind of went downhill from there. <laughs> I actually have 40 plus books here to talk about. I'm just so excited to talk about these books, honestly, because so many of my favorite books are here. Um, yes, I've read a lot of them, but a lot of them are unread, so it's going to be like a fun video, just me talking and gushing about beautiful books, books I've loved, books I've received from you guys, which is still mind-blowing. So the first three books that I see here are An Ember in the Ashes, A Torch Against the Night, and A Reaper at the Gates, all written by Saba Tahir. These were sent to me by Penguin Teen or Penguin Random House. And I, of course, have already read A Ember in the Ashes. I gave this five out of five stars. And this is one of my newest favorite fantasy books. I know that's like a very big claim to say when I've only read the first book, but just by the first book, I already can tell that this is going to be an incredible series. So many people have read these books and loved them, and the fourth book is coming out very soon, so it's like the perfect time to join the fandom, and I am so glad that I did because holy crap, apart from these books, winning in the book cover department. They're also winning in the writing department, in the fantasy department, in the everything department. And I I just love this. This is this was probably one of my favorite books to receive. And I just love them. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. The next book is The Court of Miracles, which is probably the shiniest book I have ever received. Holy crap. Um, yes, it's stunning. It's written by Kester Grant, and I got this in an Illumicrate box. Do I know what this is about? No, but I do know that it is inspired by Les Miserables. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce French words. Les Miserables. I'm gonna say it in Spanish. Los Miserables. Nice. Um, so this is inspired, or like a retelling of Los Miserables, and yeah, I don't know when I'm going to be getting to this, but I do know that I'm very, very excited. And hopefully the inside of the book is just as beautiful as the outside. The next book that I have here is The Toll, written by Neil Schusterman. This is the third and final book in the Scythe, or Arc of the Scythe. Um, trilogy and this was gifted to me by Soph over at Hugo's eighth husband aka the best username. She sent this to me and I honestly loved this. I think this was a really incredible ending to an even more incredible trilogy. I wouldn't say this is my favorite out of the three. I do think that Scythe still takes the cake on like the best book of the trilogy but this I was really happy with this ending. Um, so there we have it. <laughs> the next book was also a gift and it is Ghosts of the Shadow Market written by Cassandra Clare and also by Sarah Riggs Brennan, Maureen Johnson, Kelly Link, and Robin Wasserman. This is a collection of stories from the different characters of the Shadowhunter world, specifically Jem Carstairs and Tessa Herondale, which if you haven't read The Infernal Devices, 10 out of 10 would recommend. I did read this, but I read the ebook version. Um, <laughs> and now I really want to reread this so that I can annotate my copy. Just imagine how gorgeous it's going to look once it's annotated. Ooh. Oh! I can't wait. Next, I got volumes 7, 8, and 9 of Full Metal Alchemist. 
If you know me, I will never get tired of saying this. If you know me, you know I love Full Metal Alchemist. I would give my life for Full Metal Alchemist. I would give away my firstborn child for Full Metal Alchemist. And these additions are no... What's that word? <laughs> These editions are no exception. I love every single one of them. The story just keeps on getting better and darker and more intense and more amazing. And I cannot wait to get volume 10 and 11. So here we go. All of these were five out of five stars. Who is surprised? I think no one. I also got Heartstopper volume three. This is, I think this was probably the first book that I bought when I broke my book buying ban because everybody was just raving about this and I was like I love Heartstopper I have read the first two novel well, the first two comics or the first two volumes and I cry because I love Nick and Charlie I think they are the most wholesome couple in the universe and I would give everything for them they are so beautiful they are so <sighs> ridiculous and they're just in love and I just really wanted to get volume three. I loved this. This is probably one of my favorite volumes because they go to Paris. We love trips. We love international trips to the city of love. I love this. Um, of course, I gave this five out of five stars. Who is surprised? <laughs> the next book is Ao How to Ride, which is actually a manga, and this is volume one, and this was sent to me as a gift by Kira, and I love her. We have been talking for so long now. We talk about K-dramas, we talk about manga, we talk about books. It's lovely and insane, and we're both crazy, so we're a good match. She sent me this manga, and it's it's just really adorable. It's about this girl that hates boys, but then she meets this one guy and she's like, maybe I don't hate all boys. And just when she's about to like accept that she loves him, he moves to a different school and then they meet again in the fe <sighs> It's adorable. What? What can I say? It's adorable. Another book that I bought, even though I was supposed to be in a book buying ban, is Star Sight, written by Brandon Sanderson. As you can see, I have a few tabs, but I haven't finished reading. Oh, my bookmark is still in. I made it to page 88 before I DNF'd because I just don't think I was in the science fiction mood and I didn't want to compromise my rating of this book because I read Skyward and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. So I didn't want to read this one when I wasn't in the right mood and give it 3 out of 5 stars. So I put it down for now, but I still love it. I hope to come back to Star Sight when I'm in the right mood. But this is another book that I got during quarantine. Good choices. The next book that I also got during quarantine, hi, um, is ooh, <laughs> Uzumaki, written by Junji Ito, Spiral into Horror. This was my very first horror manga. I read this for the reading rush, I think two weeks, two weeks ago. And I had the time of my life. I read this, I started reading this at like 1 a.m. in the morning, I think, and I couldn't go to bed after because I wasn't expecting this to be terrifying. This was just incredible. This is, I didn't know what to expect when I went into this, and I feel like that's the best way to go into this manga. It's incredibly insane. It's super graphic. Of course, trigger warnings for self-mutilation and gore, maybe and violence. And yeah, all around super fun. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend to children, but I really did have the time of my life with this. Okay, so these next books I actually received from one person. There are nine books here and there should be 10, but I can't find the 10th one. I don't know where it went, but this one person, she is one of the loveliest people I have ever had the pleasure of calling my best friend. I love her to death and her name is Katie. She has a booktube and it's Katie's Book Nook and she has sent me over 10 books in less than six months. So of course I owe everything to her. I love her to bits. Like I can't get over how many books I have because of her. Um, I love her. Okay, let's go. She sent me the beautiful by by Renee Audier, which I read and gave five out of five stars. Nobody's surprised. I loved this book. It's about vampires set in New Orleans in the 1800s. Amazing. 
She also sent me Serpent and Dove written by Shelby Maurin. This I also gave five out of five stars and I loved it. It's about witches and witch hunters and obviously the witch hunter falls in love with the witch and it's like, oh, what's going on? I love it. She sent me The Vanishing Deep written by Astrid Schult. I haven't read this. Um, I've heard really good things about it, but I started it, got bored. <laughs> and decided to DNF. She also sent me Haven Fall written by Sarah Holland. Um, I also started this and I also DNF'd it because I just wasn't feeling it. God, I hope she doesn't hate me. <laughs> and then yesterday I actually received this huge box from her with like over six books, which kind of made my day. I've been feeling pretty sad just a little, just a tiny bit sad. And when I received this box full of books from Miss Katie herself, I was like, I don't know what sad is anymore. JK, I still do. <laughs> the first book she sent me was A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer. This is the sequel to A Curse So Dark and Lonely, which is all the way over there. Not gonna go look for it, but this is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. There's a prince, there's a monster, there's a girl. I feel like it's a love triangle. Do I remember? I don't remember a lot of the story. I do remember that I enjoyed it, but like a normal amount. But I'm still really excited to read this, especially because it has Katie's annotations, which I feel like reading an annotated book is a gift. Because it's like reading a book with a friend, especially if it's someone that you love so much. So it's like you're reading it with them and it's so beautiful and I can't wait to get to this. The next book she sent me was The Bone Houses written by Emily Lloyd Jones. I do not know what this is about. Is the adventure of a grave digger and a map maker, the story of a place where fable and rumor intersect with real life danger and quest, mysterious, earthy, utterly magical. That didn't tell me a thing. <laughs> She also sent Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angeles or Angeles. Moulin Rouge meets the Phantom of the Opera. Fantastic. I am here for this. And it's also like a velvety cover, which I really appreciate. So hopefully it's a good book because the cover looks really interesting. Hello. Then she also sent me All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dewar, Doer, which is also the winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Congrats. I have had my eye on this book for quite some time now. I am not 100% sure what it is about, but I did see a read with Cindy cry over this book. <laughs> So that's exciting. I all I always love watching people cry over books. All I know it's like it's set in war. Maybe it has like a blind person? Oh, Marie goes blind and her father builds a perfect miniature of their neighborhood so she can memorize it by touch and navigate her way home. Shut up. Okay, the Nazis occupy Paris and father and daughter flee to the walled citadel of St. Malo where Marie lowers... Okay, I'm gonna stop reading, but I do know that this is set in war, the, one of the characters is blind, and it's beautiful, it's heartbreaking, and it's going to make me cry. So I'm really excited to get to this. And probably one of the most gorgeous books that I have ever seen in my 22 years of life, Katie also sent me The Picture of Dorian Gray and Other Works by Oscar Wilde. It has gold edges, kind of like a Bible. I love it here. Like, it's so shiny. It's shinier than my future. I... <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there. Look at this spine! That's legal. Um, <laughs> the Picture of Dorian Gray is one of the only classics that I actually enjoyed. So as soon as she was... As soon as I saw that she was giving this away, I was like, give it to me. Come on, come to mama. These next two books were a gift from Kira and they are The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith and Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. This is a thriller and this is a YA contemporary, I believe. Our main character is dealing with the aftermath of her rape. So of course there's trigger warnings for that, but I also feel like it's such a good exploration of her feelings and 
how she deals with it and how every experience is different. Even though it's heartbreaking and it was really hard to read through at times, I just feel like it's a really beautiful and important read. So if you're open to these types of books, I would really recommend it. And then this one, which was the thriller, kind of messed with my head, not gonna lie. I don't wanna say anything because I don't wanna spoil it but not everything is what it seems. Keep your mind open, keep your eyes open, and anything is possible. <laughs> Kira truly came through. This is also another gift from Kira, and it was Imagine Me by Tahata Mafi. This is the sixth and hopefully final book of the Shatter Me, which was supposed to be a trilogy, but now is a series of six books. This is the finale, and she also got it for me, an angel. Unfortunately, <laughs> I think I gave this maybe 2.5 out of 5 stars or 3 stars if I was feeling generous, but um, this is not the place to, to open up about my feelings for Imagine Me, but this is another book that I got during quarantine. These next set of books I received from Source Books. They are The Perfect Escape, Four Days of You and Me, Conventionally Yours, which I already read and it was really cute and it was just a fluffy, easy, quick, fun read. Boyfriend Material, which I started reading and then I DNF'd because I couldn't deal with all of the cultural references and it was kind of cringe. <laughs> and The Tourist Attraction, which I also read and I really loved because it was so fluffy and it kind of reminded me of like Christmas time even though we're in the middle of summer and it doesn't even snow in my country but it just made me feel so cozy and so warm and it's about this girl that goes to Alaska. She meets this guy of course who hates tourists and it's just a whole thing okay I loved it it's trashy it's comfortable it's a good cozy read and I am so here for it okay I also got The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper Bloomsbury Publishing sent this to me so thank you Bloomsbury I this one has already come out yeah it came out on February 4th but I they sent me the arc still haven't read it though but it looks cute. Chain of Gold written by Cassandra Clare. Somebody sent this to me and I don't know who it is because it just says Mackenzie. So if you're seeing this Mackenzie, please let me know. I asked over on Twitter, nobody answered. Still not trying to be hurt by that. But somebody please tell me who sent this to me because I just wanna love you forever because this book changed my life. And then the next book, which I finished two days ago, it was <laughs> Crescent City by Sarah J Moss. I actually got this myself, thank you very much. And I, I mean, I wasn't stingy with the tabs. I went through like three packages of tabs and I'm not mad because this book deserves the love. This book deserves the attention and yeah, I'm not mad. <laughs> oh my God, Kira. <laughs> Kira keeps popping up. I love you, Kira, if you're watching this. She also got me Educated, written by Tara Westover. This, I think, was my first nonfiction of this year, along with Becoming by Michelle Obama. This tells the story of Tara Westover, and she was born to survivalists in the mountains of Idaho who were constantly preparing for the end of the world and didn't believe in the government or education. And yeah, it was a pretty toxic household, but she managed to escape. This was truly a wild nonfiction book. I, before I read this, I thought that all nonfiction was supposed to be boring. I was very wrong. Like I'm being, I'm being schooled on so many subjects this year and I'm so grateful for that opportunity. So I'm definitely going to be giving nonfiction more of a chance. I also got Felix Ever After and All Boys Aren't Blue. Felix Ever After by Cassin Callender and All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. This is a memoir manifesto and this is just a YA contemporary. And they these are both about like exploring your identity and being comfortable with you, who you are. This I really loved. I gave this five out of five stars. And this follows the story of a transgender boy who is being blackmailed with pictures of before his transition. Kind of like a coming of age story with accepting your identity finding out what your identity is and being comfortable within your community, finding your community, loving your community. It's just, 
there's so much acceptance there's so much love in this book and it was really wonderful i loved it all boys aren't blue tells a story of george m johnson and his journey to finding out his true identity and loving who he is and sort of the struggles that he had to go through as a queer person and also as a black person and how those two journeys sort of blend together. My friend Yasmin sent me Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Yemi. This is a sequel to Children of Blood and Bone. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars, I believe. I loved this. It was such a great sequel to Children of Blood and Bone. And I feel like the story is just going to keep on getting better and better. I'm not sure when the third book is coming out, but I am I'm already excited and Thank you, Yasmin, for sending this to me. I love you. This next one was a gift from Mackenzie, and it is Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nyan. Finally, finally, I have this in my hands. Ever since I read Girls of Paper and Fire, I have wanted to get my hands on the sequel, and I never did. I don't know why. So thank you, Mackenzie, for making my dreams come true. I owe you one. Thank you so much. And I cannot wait to read this. I mean, if it's just as good or maybe even better than the first book, this is already going to be a five star, so I cannot wait. These are the last three books that I have bought during quarantine, and they are Mirage by Somaya Daud. I bought this because of Fadwa. I love her. So uh, this is one of her favorite books, so I bought this because of her. Literally, I have no idea what it's about, I just know that it's her favorite book and in order to respect her and our friendship, I have to read this. The next book I got was The Rise of Kiyoshi by F.C. Yi. And honestly, like, Kiyoshi is one of my favorite avatars uh, after, of course, Aang and, and Korra. But Kiyoshi just holds, like, a special place in my heart. So, of course, I need to read more of her story. And I just miss being in the avatar world, honestly. So, like, any little crumb that I can latch onto, I am going to. And the last book that I got during quarantine, we are here, fellas. If you've made it this far, give yourself a treat. You deserve it because I have talked so much. But the last book that I bought during quarantine is We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. I bought this because of Mariam. This is her favorite book of all time, forever and ever. She is always talking about this. Even when she's not talking about this, she's talking about this. So of course, since I have been recently falling in love with her, I have to respect her enough to read her favorite book of all time. So of course, I'm currently reading this. I'm on page 56 and I am sending her all of my annotations all of my thirst comments, everything I am sending to her. And yeah, so those are all of the 40 plus books that I've bought during quarantine. I would love to know what books you guys have bought. Um, if you've read any favorites so far, like hit me up. Let's talk in the comments. I'm lonely. <laughs> I would love to talk to you guys about books. And if you see any of your favorites here that I still haven't read, do let me know which one I should pick up first. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I love you all so very much. Please stay safe and healthy. I will see you next time. Bye. Hey, Jimmy, you nice. Keep going.